Hello and welcome back to another video of Wildlife Reactor. Hope you enjoyed today's video and please subscribe. It's only the click of a button, but it helps out heaps. Now let's get to it. Hey, exactly 48 minutes. I'm gonna give a like just for that. Everyone loves a cheeky monkey. Playful, social, and intelligent. Primates are fun and fascinating to watch. That does not look right. That looks sick or something. Something's not right with that monkey. Nowhere that this monkey is actually going to look like that, naturally. Unless it's just a certain type of monkey, but I've never seen a monkey that looks like that. I don't know if you guys have. ...and intelligent. Primates are fun and fascinating to watch. But there is a greater draw. Perhaps because they bring out the inner primate in us. Monkey. Us. Through Africa, South America, and Asia, our wild cousins are far more diverse than you might think. Ever adaptable masters of survival. Since when could apes or monkeys or whatever go in the snow? I've never, I'm, I'm learning so much new stuff. I'm not big into primates and apes, but since when could, when, when could they go into snow? I thought they were like jungle only. Okay, so apparently they're called Japanese macaques, and they just, they're monkeys that live in the snow. I never knew that they could live in the snow, monkeys, or apes, at all, but apparently they can, and yeah, that's really interesting, I never knew that. We enjoy watching their lives, but in doing so, we might learn a little bit about ourselves. Damn. lives a close-knit family and today is special why is it special a new member joins the eastern lowland gorilla clan oh. you are them baby baby the baby a tiny primate curiously reaches out exploring with its hands totally dependent on his mother's care <laughs> Proud family members gather, all eager to get a glimpse of their new sibling. This is very human-like. You know, they get the new baby, everyone wants to see the new baby, new sibling. Probably going to be annoying in the future, but you know. In their society, as in ours, babies have great appeal. They all want to greet the new arrival. Everyone seems deep in thought. It's his job to protect the family. And they are never more vulnerable than with a child. The leopard. Oh, leopard. A deadly jungle hunter. Yeah, they're like, they go for gorillas. But wouldn't, you'd think that the gorilla would easily be able to beat a leopard because it's like insanely strong. It's like 10 times stronger than any man. And it ripped. Our head off. So you'd think they could easily be able to launch and beat the shit out of a leopard. The leopard is a master of stealth. But the silverback spots its track. Where are you going? In this way, the gentle giants can avoid direct conflict most of the time. The biggest of primates. He stands as tall as a man and weighs more than 150 kilograms. He's truly the king of the jungle. The gorilla's kingdom is the dense, dark tangle of rainforest that stretches across much of Central Africa. This is where our first primate ancestors evolved. More than 20 species of monkey share the gorilla's homeland. Because there are so many living in the same area, each sports its own unique markings, making it easier to recognize their own kind. Well, then that's pretty smart, like evolutionary wise. Like they each got their own, like humans, they have their own distinct looks. Genetics suggest primates appeared just before the demise of the dinosaurs, around 85 million years ago. There are now around 160 species. 160 species of monkeys. 
That is not that much. That is like, I'm pretty sure there's donkey, I'm pretty sure the donkey, all like over a hundred species, just the donkeys alone. So for monkeys to have over a hundred, like about a hundred species, that is not that much. That looks like a bat more than a monkey. Bat monkey. The tiny species like cotton top tamarins give an idea of what our earliest ancestors might have looked like. Their bird-like chirps allow the group to stay in contact so that no one gets lost in dense jungle. <laughs> Having good communication and friends to watch your back is very useful. There are many day Yeah, they just kind of yell at each other. Good yeah, they just kind of just kind of yell and howl at the top of their lungs. That's good communication always. Cation and friends to watch your back is very useful. There are many dangers in the rainforest. Man, I do not like spiders. They look ugly, they are... Oh, they are awful looking. Like, look at this. Look at the way it walks. Oh, and it's got eight legs. And it's got poison. Oh, ugh. Red howler monkeys use their vocal gifts to proclaim their territory and keep their clan together. That doesn't sound like a monkey, that sounds like a grizzly bear. I didn't expect that from something I could fit my school bag. This rainforest is home to a very unusual and distinctive looking primate, found here and nowhere else. The that is one ugly monkey. And what is that nose? It looks like a Minecraft villager. King Hooter is a male proboscis monkey. His gruff calls unite and reassure his group. His harem of half a dozen females and their young always stay close in the canopy. One of his females has an infant, just a few weeks old. They are not the only primates enjoying the canopy. The long-tailed or crab-eating macaques have a broader diet than the proboscis and aren't so dependent on the trees, but seem to enjoy the larger monkey's company. A young macaque watches intently. She seems fascinated by the little baby. For the first few months of life, the baby will cling to its mother's side. There is a long drop, and she doesn't yet have the head for heights. The monkey plucks up the courage to make its move. This sort of mixed species interaction is extremely rare, though it has been witnessed in several species of primate. Being social is a family trait. The macaque tries squeezing itself between mother and child. Playtime's over, much to the macaque's dismay. It can be hard living with a monkey on your back. While the big noses of Borneo enjoy their lush mangrove, other species have adapted to much more arid environments. Bonnet macaques take advantage of the buildings of other primates which now abandoned, offer great shelter and a vantage point to look over India's hot, dry forest. So they literally rolled the people for their buildings. Well, not literally, because the people already left, and then they went in the buildings, but still. This is the perfect time to groom, combing through one another's fur to remove any parasites. The older animals in the troop have a spectacular knowledge of their patch, and know when different foods come into season. Damn, that's advanced. They know which season the fruit grows and which, which fruit goes in which season. That's pretty like, that's pretty smart. As they travel, the younger animals will learn the ropes. At the moment, the dish of the day is jackfruit. The biggest fruits grow on trees. Jackfruits are packed with sweet flesh, high in fiber, and delicious to us as well as our fellow primates. Once they've found a ripe fruit, the monkeys look shifty, wanting to keep the treasure from their neighbors. They can defend them from other troop members, 
but some diners are harder to turn away. What well, our pops a bear take the same fruit? Damn. They are forced to surrender the table to the next customer. Sloth bears have fiery tempers and prefer their own company. So he sits down to dine alone. The macaques are a diverse group of monkeys. Thanks to their adaptability, they are widespread in Asia. The arid open home of the bonnets contrasts with the seasonal forests of the Japanese macaque. Though they can climb like all monkeys, the macaques do a lot of foraging on the ground. The little ones, too small to join in, are watched over by their mums. The social status of a mother will be handed down to her daughters and must be adhered to throughout their lives. Higher ranking animals will eat first, hang out in the best spots and mate with the highest ranking males. There is so much for the little macaques to learn. Toward night, he'll be wandering further from his mother's side and will be able to join in the games of the other youngsters. Go away, you little shit. Summer on the mountains of Japan is a time of plenty, and the whole family seems relaxed. One reason it's so rich in monkeys, but in some areas, the forest gives way to plains, and right now, it's getting hot. Baboons are grassland specialists, perhaps the most adaptable of all primates. Baboons roam the plains eating everything from seeds to young antelope. The impala often hang around the baboons, making the most of dropped fruit. It seems like paradise here. But it has dangers of its own. I wouldn't really call this paradise if this predator is literally lurking around every second. Like, it's pretty dangerous. If they go by the river, or they go near some bushes where there's an ambush predator, they're pretty screwed. Crocodiles lay their eggs in scooped out nests in the sand. And what do they just have their mouths just open? Do they just hope something will land in their mouths? Are they that hungry? What are they just, they're just sitting there with it open. Their best to stand guard. There are egg thieves everywhere. Eggs are packed with protein, the perfect meal. And the monitor lizards steal as many as they can. Their antics give the brainy baboon an idea. The lizard has already opened the nest. He just has to wait until the crocodile is distracted by the thieves. And then he makes his move. Take the eggs, go. Dip with the eggs. First of all, that must taste nice, like egg. Like, I like eggs, personally. I know the chicken eggs are not crocodile eggs, but still. Actually, I've tried crocodile. It's quite nice. It just tastes like chicken. So I'm guessing the eggs taste the same as chickens as well. And B, that must, must be so shit for the mum. That poor mum. They can't really do anything. They're not very fast on land. It just kind of has to sit there and watch its babies getting eaten. Though the banquet is short-lived. As the undergrowth gets thicker, other primates are less worried about their next meal. When the best leaves have been stripped from one area, they'll simply move to the next. And where he goes, the family follows. The baby gorilla is now hanging out with older cousins, and they follow the silverback wherever he goes. He's a strong leader, so perhaps an aspirational role model. Like the Pied Piper of primates, the troop leaders have a great accumulated knowledge of the forest, something that will rub off on the youngsters if they focus. This man is not focusing at all. He doesn't give a shit about this family. As a general rule, it's believed that many primates don't like getting their feet wet, and gorillas especially are not the best swimmers. But in this habitat, the odd paddle is hard to avoid. The little male's lucky. He gets a piggyback across. The silverback knows that if they want to get to the best food, they must cross the streams. <laughs> 